Hello, friends. Happy Wednesday. Hope you're hitting the halfway point in the week uh, in a good way and looking forward to riding that hill down to the weekend. I've got my doodler, which I obtained from Corvette Jim Pipe Rescue. Jim sure does beautiful work, and I know Jim's out of commission for a while or shut down for a while but look forward to the day when you uh, open your doors up once again Jim uh, hope it's not too long great little pipe haunted bookshop you know I don't understand why there's more smoke lately I guess I could try to get a, I've got a air filter over there. Maybe that air filter is not running. I should check on that. Yeah. Anyway, I don't know what the problem is, but just enjoy the smoke. I had to do a rare video appearance at work this afternoon. That's why I'm all dressed up for you. been a busy day. It's been a busy week. They're all busy though. All good stuff. I've been getting a little bit of shop time in in the mornings before work starts. Uh, I used to really like to do it in the evenings and you know like after work finished and then after dinner for a while but I'm too tired these days. I, I just uh, I guess that's a getting older thing. I don't have the stamina that I used to. So I now shoot for the mornings, and uh, that's working out okay. And I'm happy to report I'm back to STEM making, so that's pretty good. I'm feeling really good and been able to go through all the the steps today without any real issues. So I, I think I'm I think I'm 100 percent, or well, maybe 95 percent. I'm still not going to be lifting anything heavy, but you don't have to to make a stem. Working on a replacement stem on this uh, 7LE Lumberman for my buddy Bill. It's a interesting little little stem. Little stems are always more of a problem than big stems. It's the original and my replacement that I'm working on now. So, still got some work to do, obviously. This is bent a little bit. This isn't. I don't have the button worked out yet. But the basic profile is looking good. We're still at the rough shaping stage, but moving on to uh, some fine sanding in the very near future. So I'm really happy about that. Uh, the files are singing again. I gotta say, I've I've really grown to appreciate files um, as I've become a stem maker. Um, I, you know, to me, a file was like a last resort. Uh, it just never seemed like a precision instrument to me, but it really is. You can you can really do some some fine detail work with a file if you're if you know how to use them and if you're careful. It's amazing. I, I've actually, you know, taken one stroke and measured, then taken another stroke and measured with uh, calipers, and you pretty much you're taking off this, the exact same amount of material with each stroke. So, for example, when you're trying to thin this region down, you know that region right behind the button. If you take three strokes off on this side and then turn it over and take another three strokes, you can be pretty certain that you're closing in on that airway the same distance on both sides. And that helps you avoid filing through the airway if you're lucky. Um, I was lucky with this. So, yeah, I mean, that wouldn't be possible with, you know, something like sandpaper. Um, you, you just go into town with it and you wouldn't know how far down you've gone, but you can get very, very accurate with a file. 
So I've become a bit of a file nerd, which is fine. We all got to be a nerd about something, right? I just happen to be a nerd about many things. This is my... This is my latest file edition. Picked this up a few weeks ago, but used it for the first time today. It's a Japanese file. This is actually a um, fine Japanese file. So you can see the teeth on that. Hopefully you can see them. They sure don't look fine. They look coarser than some of my really coarse rasps. And I... I tried this and man it just digs in you, you, it's going to take out big chunks of material and i that, that that can't be right you know this isn't a fine but then i tried a couple of light strokes and i tell you this thing is so sharp if you again you gotta you gotta know what you're doing you gotta practice but if you can do do constant but very light pressure and just glide it across the surface. This thing just takes off a very fine shaving, almost like uh, a bunch of little planes cutting across the surface of the material. Really a wonderful file. I have not used it enough yet to say that it's you know going to greatly change what I do, but it certainly is an interesting tool, and I'm I'm glad that I've got it and I can practice with it and see where it gets. So. I used it a bit in the early stages of shaping of this, but I didn't trust myself with it to do any of the fine detail work. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to playing with this some more. Uh, I think they're called Ikasana, Ika, something like that. I'll put a link below to uh, to these. I got them from Lee Valley, I believe. I'll put a link below in case you're interested. Um, not cheap. I think this was about $30, but good files are never cheap. But if you take care of them, they last <clears throat> a very long time. And for the kind of materials that I'm filing, usually, they'll, they'll last forever. Or at least for my lifetime. So, yeah, the files are singing. There's something about using files. It's, it's a rhythmic motion. It's, um, it's, it's tactile. You get that sensory feedback as you feel it sliding. You, you hear it. There's just something about it that I enjoy. You know, I do a lot of work when I'm making stems. I do a lot of work with files that I could probably do a lot faster with a you know, my belt sander or some of those new sanding wheels that I made, the French wheels. But it's not as enjoyable. And I feel like I'm, I've got better control with the files. Anyway. Uh, it's nice to take a break this afternoon. It's uh, it's almost four o'clock. So I'm going to work for a little bit more. I got started and I started at like eight o'clock this morning in my day job, and I started working on stems about six thirty this morning. But that's a labor of love. So. Um, it's Wednesday, which means Friday's in a couple of days, and we got a. Cane Rod Pipes Virtual Pipe Club scheduled for this Friday at 8 p.m. Eastern, right here on this channel. Um, all the usual shenanigans. We uh, don't have any guest plan or anything special, just uh, sharing a few bowls and chatting and probably having an adult beverage. Probably. Started a new pound of haunted bookshop yesterday. If you follow me on Instagram, I've been tracking how long it takes me to go through a pound of haunted bookshop. And 
it's interesting because it was it was <laughs> it was diving down like I was I was smoking it faster and faster and I you know made the joke that it, if this continues eventually it's going to be smoked before I get it um, but then right before Christmas it popped up again and I've been sitting at I think it was 46 days for a pound right maybe right after Christmas and then this the next pound that started then uh, went for 45 days so we seem to have hit some level of consistency I think it, I'm adding a few days because I'm smoking other stuff now uh, just trying to finish up some tins that I opened around the holidays um, so you know usually, usually uh, I'm having a few more bowls a day of other things than I normally would and that's probably slowing me down a bit which is a good thing gives old Everett Young a chance to stock up poor Everett <laughs> he uh Every time he goes to buy a haunted bookshop, it's out of stock, and he blames me. It was me once. I, <laughs> I kind of felt bad about that, but I didn't know. You know, it's one of these things where it was out of stock for a while, and then it came back in, and I, I went to buy some, and I was going to buy two pounds, and they said, you know, the, the amount exceeds the amount available. Huh, okay, well, what about two and a half pounds? No, that was, that. Did, I'm sorry, one and a half pounds, and that didn't work. And then I said, okay, what about, you know, one pound? I, so I figured out how much they had, and essentially they had like one pound and three ounces. So I bought the pound. And the next day, Everett said, you know, I went to buy one at bookshop, and they only had three ounces left. I thought, oops. <laughs> But they made more. That's the one good thing. They they make more. Somebody asked me in, in a comment the other day, what would I do if they stopped making Haunted Bookshop? Um, I'd switch to old Joe Krantz. But it's close enough for me. A little too sweet for my taste but I can live with it um, yeah that's what I do now, if they stop making Cornell and deal tobacco that would be a problem for me because I Cornell and deal Burley to me is some of the best tobacco you can buy You know, I might go to something like H and H Burley Flake. I think you can get that in bulk. Yeah, I need to find that old day Burley. That'll be the tough thing. I want something that's in bulk, readily available, and would be an all day, an all day blend. And uh, well. Hopefully Cornell and Deal will be around for many years to come. But it's interesting to think about that. You know, if if you're a guy that has his go to blend, you know, we all we all dabble in things here and there, but you know, is there something that's just always gonna be there for you? What do you do if it's not there tomorrow? Because it could happen. It's happened, and it will happen again. So, what are you going to do? Worth thinking about. And maybe worth exploring as well. You know, try some other things so that you got an alternate. Of course, your alternate might disappear, too. <laughs> I guess the best thing is just don't worry about it. Enjoy what you got, and uh, you know we. I've told several people this uh, recently, and I've said it many times over, and I think other people have said it before me. We 
have more selection right now than at any other time in history. So, you know, we can talk about, oh, gee, I wish I could get, you know, whatever blend that they don't make anymore, you know, the McClellan blends or the original Dunhill or whatever. Yeah, um, but you got more choices than anyone has ever had before you. Well, find something else. Don't chase unicorns. If a unicorn falls in your lap, smoke it, enjoy it. Don't chase them. Well, I think I've had enough tobacco talk to limit the YouTube ads for this one. <laughs> Hopefully, I know they get annoying. I think I'm going to call this to a close. It's been nice chatting with you. I hope you're all having a great week and looking forward to the weekend. It's coming soon, guys. Y'all take care, and we will talk again real soon. Bye now.